Greetings YouTube, Joe here with Culination Media and welcome back to another episode of Metroid Prime. This is episode number 23 and in this episode we're going to be picking up a couple of missile expansions, energy tanks, and also a new weapon. Uh, but first of all, we are back here in the furnace in the Chozo ruins as I showed you on the map a second ago. Uh, up against the wall here there is a bit of Vendesium that you can blow up uh, with the power bomb now that we have that. And you can use a boost ball to get up onto the spider ball track um, and just avoid these plated parasites or whatever they're called. Something parasite. And you're going to want to land on this little uh, beam here. You can fall off obviously because there's no railing. Um, and you can kill these things uh, with a nicely timed morph ball bomb but uh, that just made me fall off. So that probably wasn't a good idea but uh, nonetheless um, yeah, that's what we're doing here, and we'll be getting a couple of these, ouch, we'll be getting a couple of these, uh, collectibles throughout the episode before we go and do what we're actually supposed to do, um, which is, uh, something in Magmore Caverns, so we'll be getting to that later on, so this is gonna be kind of sort of a long episode, but that's alright, we're actually getting towards the end of the game, uh, there's probably... I don't even know how many episodes are left, but yeah. So I finally killed that little parasite guy, and yeah, there we go. Yes, both of them are dead. And I didn't fall off. How did I make that happen? Alright, so if you just go to the edge here, you should be able to drop off and just skip over this last um, part of the spider ball track. So that part's pretty cool. And that takes you right to the missile expansion. And uh, that's all we were going to do here, so out we go. Alright, we are here in the Watery Hall, uh, which is still in the Chozo Ruins. This is actually where we got the charge beam way back at the beginning of the game. And uh, you can get this uh, next little collectible at any point after you have the gravity suit. So we've had that for quite a while. So just go over to the corner here and you can drop into the water and there's a deeper section that leads underneath a tree root and you can only jump up here with the gravity suit uh, but it leads you up to a missile expansion so yeah all right we're still in Chozo ruins but there's something else that we need to get so we actually haven't been in this room this is the magma pool um, right next to the ruined fountain so uh, it also near the Arboretum, so it's not that difficult to get to. Uh, you may have come in here and noticed that you needed the grapple beam and just walked away because you can't cross the lava. Um, so there's nothing on this side, I believe, but there is a missile expansion on the other side. So let's get our grapple beam and we can cross the magma, like so. And yay, missiles! I actually have uh, quite a large amount of missiles stockpiled. Anywho, going to blow that wall up with a power bomb, and there's Chozo lore here. The power of our temple has been enough to halt the spread of the poison of Talon 4, but that which remains thrives and grows more concentrated, gnawing on itself in the dark passages beneath the planet's surface. Whether it can ever be truly destroyed is not for our eyes to see, but there is something else. We Chozo are drifting, tumbling through space, and time, as the great poison eats away at our sanity, we wake up in dreams, and oh, I don't know why I did that. I just took my finger off the button. Uh, where was I? We wake in dreams as the veil of lunacy descends, as past and future blend, shuffle, one image appears and flickers through the landscape. Wraith-like, the hatchling, the newborn, walking the path of corruption, a lone figure shining in the toxic shadows. Interesting. She comes dressed for war, and her wrath is terrible. Do our eyes look backwards, seeing the hatchling as she once was? Which is us. Or does she approach even now, arriving in our race's last hour, savior clothed in machines crafted long ago by Chozo hands? Poisonous clouds drift across our vision. Interesting enough, um, so that basically just talks about us being the hatchling, the savior of the Chozo, but we unfortunately don't get to save them because they are extinct. Nonetheless, 
Uh, we pick up a power bomb expansion there, which increases the amount of power bombs that we can carry. And through the wave beam door is a new area that we have not been to. So let's see where we are here. The training chamber. And when you enter the room, you're going to be attacked by Chozo ghosts, which really are not nearly as difficult as they used to be now that we have the x-ray visor and we can track their movements. So they don't have the surprise factor anymore. Uh, so you can just keep the x-ray visor on and just continually shoot them. Uh, super missiles work the best, in my opinion. Um, it doesn't kill them in one hit, but um, one charge beam shot plus a super missile kills them off pretty fast. So after they're defeated and the room goes back to normal, uh, you see that two statues had something broken in them here. So we can use the boost ball and it looks like they're uh, morph ball slots. So go in the first one there and lay a bomb and that blows open that mouth or the mouth and that statue's thing, whatever. Whatever. It blows up the door. And the second one reveals a spider ball track um, and a little lift for us to get up there. So let's do that first. Take this up to the spider ball track. And where is this taking us? Uh, ah, to an energy tank. Well, it's a good thing I went there. So, uh, let's see here. Apparently there's nothing else in this room. Let's head on back and see what's through the uh, statue's mouth. It apparently is a tunnel. Okay. That was really stupid of me to do. Uh, so we're actually almost done with the Chozo Ruins completely here. And after this time in Magmore Caverns, towards the end of this episode, I don't even know if we're going to have to go back. Because so I think I have all the artifacts from there, too. I don't remember. Oh, well. Alright, so once we get through there... Hey, open! Open! Thank you. Uh, this leads to... Ah, this is the main plaza. And there is a missile expansion across the way. Um, connected with a grapple beam so you can just make the jump over to the grapple beam and as you can see this is the main plaza so we've probably seen this missile expansion looking up before but that's all right and there we go there we have it all right we are still in the Chozo ruins here and um, this time we're back in the training chamber access. We were actually in this room a few minutes ago, but I missed something. And there's a tunnel over here by the leaves that's kind of almost invisible. Um, but you kind of just have to find it. And once you do, you get a missile expansion. Yay! Alright, we are in Magmore Caverns. And we're going to be using our x-ray visor in this room here. We've actually been here before. Um... This is on the way to Fendrana Drifts. But anywho, we're going to be using our X-ray visor to see these invisible platforms that we can jump on. Um, and I don't know if I can make that jump, but I'm going to try. Eh, uh, no. Okay, I have to go up here. Uh, but there's actually something we missed in this room, so I want to make sure I get it before I forget about it because I don't want to have to come back. So once you jump across all the platforms, like so... I think I was supposed to be on that one. There is a missile expansion right in this uh, part of the wall. You can blow it up with a super missile and just jump across. And there we have it, yet another missile expansion. So uh, let's move on, shall we? Okay, so we are back. Actually, I actually don't remember the name of this particular room. We've been here quite a few times. So um, we're actually, we have a couple of things that we can do in here and in the surrounding rooms before we head out to uh, get our next weapon. So the first thing that we're going to do is... Let's see if I remember where it is. This is the monitor station. That's the name of the room. Okay. So we're going to be going this way. We'll be going through some of the other doors later on. 
We've been over this way before, um, but you can now lay a power bomb in the middle of this tunnel uh, where the lights are out. And that just uh, gives you access to the lower portion here and the ice spreader, which is the ice beam version of the super missile. I don't think it's as good as the wave buster. That thing's just ridiculous. Uh, but this thing is pretty darn cool, I have to say. Uh, this powerful attack uses 10 missiles. Using the ice beam, press and hold A to charge, and then Y to fire. So it fires exactly like the super missile. You don't really have to do anything different. It does use 10 missiles instead of the usual 5. So I guess keep that in mind. Uh, but it's pretty darn cool. Uh, it pretty much just... Well, I guess I'll just show you. There we go. And how awesome is that? It just freezes an entire large area. Pretty awesome if you ask me. Alright, now that we've found that, we're going to be moving on. And we've actually been in this room before too, but we didn't have what we needed to get all the items. So jumping up to the top here, uh, we're going to be going in that door across the way, but we have to take kind of a roundabout uh, way to get there because well we can't jump that far we can't fly either and do I need to use this yes I do okay I was wondering what that did but we kind of need that bridge because otherwise we can't make that jump alrighty so once we do that I guess I don't need my ice beam out anymore do I now this room has a Chozo statue, and as you can see, it's, there's an artifact that we actually could have gotten before, but I knew I was going to have to come back here, so I just saved it. Uh, anyway, this is the Artifact of Strength, the second of twelve, and we now have one, two, three, four artifacts. Well, isn't that just fantastic? There's actually something else we can do here, though. There's Bendizium on the floor, so blow that up, and that's what we needed to wait uh, to get. Now we can go back into Morph Ball mode, and this should open, there we go, and you drop down to the floor below, and it looks like it is a Power Bomb expansion waiting for us. So we're just on fire with the collectibles today. Okay, so I guess it looks like the only way out of here is through this tunnel. So let's go. Where the hell are we? Ah, uh, the Fiery Shores. Okay, well, we don't need to be here, so let's keep going. All right, we're headed to the geothermal core, and we're just about there. Uh, we pretty much have gotten all of the um, stray items just laying around that I wanted to get leading up to this point, so we're pretty good right now. Uh, the geothermal core is actually a huge, huge room, um, and it's kind of a lot to do here, so this might take a while. And as you can see, the room is just sprawling. And I think we were supposed to start over here. I don't know if I can make that jump. No. How in the world do I get up there? That was a really bad jump on my part. Holy crap. Oh, well, there's just a platform. If I knew that was going to be that easy, I would have just done that in the first place. All right, so now we can make this grapple beam uh, point and go ahead and slingshot over to the first platform. Go ahead into Morph Ball mode and you're going to use a spinner to raise part of the platform so that uh, this will continue our path for us as we circle around onwards and upwards. So each area should have a spinner thingy-majiggy to help you continue to create your path and I'm guessing that it's the next one? Yeah, there we go. Alright, so... We'll go ahead and spin that up. I also saw a spider ball track over here. I don't know if we can access that right now. Oh, apparently we can. So that will take us up to the next level. Up to the platform that we raised. And... Did I miss a spinner? I feel like I may have. Because there's no platforms up here. And that seems like a bad sign. Um... I don't know which one I would have missed, unless I just am being retarded. Maybe it's a little bit of both. There must be one down here. 
And there it is. Okay. So I'm not crazy. Not completely crazy. This one has a far way to go up. Dang. Okay. Now that we have that... I don't know. Yeah, I did that one already. So let's see. Any more? No, this must be the one that I looked at at first and just decided that there was no more spinners. Alright, so now we can head back up the spider ball track again. And now we can make this jump. Okay. Alright, we're doing okay here. This one is a morph ball slot, not so much a boost ball slot. And once we activate that, the roof raises even more to reveal a huge set of spider ball tracks sprawling across the uh, entire room. And it's kind of crazy. And we're going to have to go through all of it. It's not necessarily a maze, but uh, it certainly is very annoying. And if you mess up, you're going to have to start all over again. It looks like this is where we start. So, using Morph Ball Bomb to get up to this first spider ball track. And we're going to be doing lots of track jumping and just dropping and connecting to other tracks like so. I'm going to see if I can do this on my first try. In previous attempts, I've messed up quite a few times, so hopefully this won't be that bad. These parasites can be your worst nightmare here if you don't kill them, so I'm going to make sure that they're dead. Especially in case I fall down and have to go through these parts again, I would rather have them be dead and just not have to worry about them. So that wasn't that bad. This part kind of sucks. Um, so we have to go down the hill and just connect before you fall off. Not that bad. Okay, this is all stuff that we've done before pretty much. It's just we've never had to do so much of it without any room for error here. I probably should have went the other way. There we go. Okay, we're getting there. One thing about this little area is that you don't have to stay on the yellow part. Uh, and you can just stick to the entire wall. It's completely magnetic, so... If you have to avoid the parasites or your own morph ball bomb to kill them, it's uh, not that big of a deal if you go off the track. So, it would have been helpful to know that, like the first time that I did this years ago, because I was all about staying on the yellow part when not necessary. It made my life a lot more difficult. Alright, now that we're through that, you can just continually use morph ball bombs here to go up and up and up. And once we reach the top, this part's kind of hard to time it, but basically after you drop, just hold the button down, and then when you do get within range, it'll just grab it, so it's not really that difficult. It looks difficult, it looks scary, but it's not. Alright, one parasite, two parasites. I feel like a lot of times I just walk right into your morph ball bombs, I don't know why. Maybe because they're shiny. And we should be almost there. We're pretty much at the top of the room. In fact, we are. All right, so that wasn't that bad. First try. I'm proud of myself. Use the ice beam uh, to get through. And we've entered the room with our last beam upgrade. The plasma beam. And this thing is incredible. Plasma beam acquired. All right. Alright, so we're back in Magmore Caverns, in the Magmore Workstation, and there's one last thing that I wanted to get, um, and there's actually, should be a safe station around here, so we're going to do that, and then we'll call it an episode. Uh, we definitely got a lot done this time, so I'm not worried about it. Uh, so we've been in here a couple of times, uh, now that we have the thermal visor, we can... I, in fact, I think we've been in here with the thermal visor. I just decided not to do this. Uh, but there's a couple of whatchamacallits, conduits, uh, across the room. So um, once you hit all of them, the lava will be cooled in the center area under the floor. So we can now go into morph ball mode safely and travel underneath uh, the floor here. So if you notice around the room, there's still areas with lava and we're actually going to be headed into those areas as well. This is kind of like a game of cooling all of the different areas until we find the one with the item. 
So I guess there's nothing in here but scanning this. Access to east channel door. Access granted. Okay, so... Now the green one is going to be open, and it looks like it's straight across the way. So uh, we do have a time limit on this one. So we kind of need to hurry our little butts up. Use the boost ball. As long as you don't choose the wrong door, you should be okay. Or get caught by those guys. Stupid triclops. I think it's this one. Yeah, go, Samus, go. All right, we're good. Now we can scan this. North channel. Okay, or north chamber. I'm not sure what it said. I skipped over it. Purple, and it looks like that was to the right. And there was a fork in the path right about where we entered this, so it should be right here. And there we go. An energy tank. Definitely worth it. They made you work for that one a little bit, but some of the other ones have just been so painfully easy that I think we deserved... A little bit more of a challenge this time. I hate these triclops. How did that not kill you? It was definitely in your face, in your triclops mouth thingamajiggy. All right, uh, well that is all I wanted to do in this episode guys. Uh, like I said, we got a lot done. We got tons of missile expansions, um, what, two energy tanks, an artifact, and the plasma beam. Um, so, yeah, I'm gonna say we can call it an episode here. There should be a save station over here somewhere. Well, I guess it's a good thing I came over here because we can blow this up with Bendesium now and have access to a new elevator. Sweetness. I think this is, uh, access to Fendrana Drift, if I'm not mistaken. Somewhere in here. It, oh no, phase on Mines. My bad. Alright, so maybe I should find the right save station. That's not what I was looking for. I was looking for the one that was Pendrana Drift because I know on the other side of it, it's like a... It's... I don't know, it's one of those rooms that has an elevator and then doors on either side. It must be this door over here. I hate these things so badly and unfortunately, as soon as you leave... The, really? I, that was... I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. I literally went flying off the platform. Oh god. Okay. I really thought this was going to be the least time consuming thing I did all day was getting to the safe station. But apparently not. I should probably just kill these guys, but I just don't want to. I already had to kill them when we entered the room. I don't even care about these flamethrowers. I'm just running. Whatever. On my way to a safe station. Finally. Okay, we actually haven't been to this uh, safe station yet. As you can see, it still has its missile thingy on the door. Blow that up. Oh, well, we finally made it. Uh, but that's going to be it for this time, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and please stay tuned for episode number 24. Game on!